Hello and welcome back. Today we are joined by two chefy friends, Jack and Will from Fallow. Thanks for joining us. It's lovely to be here. Now oh, yeah. Fallow is an epic restaurant in London, one of the best in the UK, and they have four sustainable ideas from their menu to share with our normals. I think we're going to have a good day. The best day. Number one, lift the cloche. <laughs> That is some sort of ornament. What the hell From is under, it? Or is it an uh, oh, under, under the sea? No, no, no. The bottom gives it away. It's a extraordinary mushroom. It is indeed. It is indeed. Yeah, that's, a, that's one of the best mushrooms in the world. Very good for your brain. Really? Yeah, it's got some amazing stuff going on in there. Obviously, with the title of this video, it's British. Well, it's British in the, in, in the sense that it was grown in our kitchen in a mushroom tree house. A and you can get them house. in the UK, yeah. You're not able to forage them in the wild in the UK just because they're critically endangered. But we cultivate them ourselves and this is a fantastic lion's mane mushroom. Lion's mane. Yeah. Oh, so I think I've heard of lion's mane tea. Like... Yeah, I mean, it's so, good for your, um, it's so good for your brain. It's so good for recall. Uh, that's what you keep telling me anyway. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's... it's it's a beautiful mushroom that's got such a like, sweet fragrance when it's raw, but if you like, poached it in a liquid and then compressed it and cooked it, it'll give you like, the best mushroom steak. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome it's versatile mushroom. Squash the entire thing in yeah, the steak? I mean, that goes to nothing, so you squash it under a big pan and cook it in foam and butter like you would have like, a, a steak, and it, it's just completely different. But today we're going to use it raw, and you'll get this like awesome fragrance on top of our mushroom parfait. This is not how I expected the video to start. Absolutely not. <laughs> Would you like to see it in a dish? Yes! So this is our mushroom parfait, so it's our version of a vegetarian foie gras, so it's super intense. There's about six different types of mushrooms that go into that, depending on what we've got available at the time. So button, chestnut, we've got shiitakes on there, we've got noki, you've got portobello in the puree, and then you've got this beautiful lion's mane that we're going to get you guys to finish the dish with. Mushrooms on toast is one of my all-time favourites, yeah. even in its simplest form. Yeah. The fact we're going to this level is outrageous. Also, the description of a mushroom take on foie gras. How did you force feed these ones? <laughs> <laughs> so what do we do with this? So basically, if you take it and just rip a chunk off it, sort of, maybe I can show you it. <laughs> if you just break it apart, then you can see the internal structure of the mushroom. And what you're going to do is break it into a smaller piece and then you're just going to pull some lovely strands, start from the furry end and just pull little strands off like so. Ooh. And then you're just going to decorate them all over the top of the mushroom and they're going to give it that really beautiful, minerally, like mouth tingly sensation. Just a little sprinkling. We buy a lot of second class mushrooms from the market, damaged mushrooms, mushrooms which have been broken, stems from around the rest from, from our restaurant. So you can pretty much use any variety of mushrooms that you might have. And then we just roast them off really, really dark, really intense in butter to so have a really like nutty flavor on them. And then we blend that into a puree. Um, and then that basically replaces the meat element in the chicken liver parfait. And then you're just adding your shallots and your alcohol reduction, your butter, your eggs, and then you just cook it exactly like a chicken liver parfait. Cheers. Cheers. Mushroom flavour is extraordinary. It's almost like you've got a, um, a very like a meaty jus that's going to be mixed yeah. into it. It's, it's like, like a... uh, soy and mirin reduction. Yeah. It's... Oh. And back to the mushroom treehouse, which we just glossed over. Like, what, what is that? Uh, it's honestly, it's a loft cavity in our building. All you need to grow mushrooms in a really small area is humidity and a temperature control. But it's up a ladder with ultraviolet light and we, we can grow up to about, on average, about 100 kilos a week out of that just a small week? space. Yeah, it's a, massive, it's a massive amount of mushrooms for such a tiny area. So that's why everyone's going crazy for mushrooms right now because it's a super efficient and easy thing to grow in a small space. You hear about the likes of sort of vertical farming and stuff, but essentially yeah. for you to have that space above the restaurant that's controlled, and it is so cool, I had the, the luxury of climbing up that very small ladder, <laughs> and it's like climbing into like Aladdin's cave up there. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of a bit trippy, but in it an amazing It is a bit way. trippy, isn't it, yeah. And one that size, like the size of a head of a cauliflower, basically. Yeah. How long would that take to, to grow to that size? It, I mean, in total, it's about, it's, it's about a three to four month process, because the, the bags, it has to be inoculated with spores, and then it has to stay in a controlled environment before it even starts to fruit. And then what happens is all the spores populate the block and then you slash them open and the introduction of oxygen and the right conditions will allow them to fruit. They start pinning and then they fruit and the fruiting will last for about two weeks 
in that time, the sort of temperature and humidity is really important. It's got to stay really consistent and then you'll get a beautiful fruit from that. Not a bad start. Not a bad start at all. That is stonking. Do you want another cloche? Oh, yes. Bring it. It's about that time of day. Lift the cloche very oh, carefully. No. What does that mean? Oh, yes. Ooh. Okay. Ebbers, it's, it's 10 a.m. <laughs> and? <laughs> Oh, that is delicious. Oh, it's very alcoholic, which leads me down like a martini type oh, yeah. line. Oh, yeah. It's also really savoury. I can't work out what the flavour is. So you've got the martini bit correct, but boys, put my misery it. on the rest. Smashed it. Oyster shell martini. Oyster shell. Yep. And like everything on their menu, you hear it and then you have a lot more questions. Yeah, so we sell a lot of oysters and um, we were throwing these away on the reg and then our manager just started smashing them up with a pair of goggles on, infused it into some um, beautiful vodka, mix it with a bit of martini and then, yeah, so you basically cook out the oyster shells. Pasteurise them first so they're safe to eat and then cook them uh, about 50 degrees in vodka um, for about three hours and then they just get this beautiful like salinity. It's, it's so subtle. It's not salty, it tastes like um, the water from a fresh oyster. Like it's not oh it's not overpoweringly salty at all. You've just got that, what was the word? Salinity? That one. <laughs> Minerality. What a great way of using up oyster shells that would otherwise be thrown away. Try the uh, try the leaf as well. Are we gonna share that? Mm-hmm. Love me. <laughs> <laughs> Starts off quite spinachy, but then it changes. Does that taste of like oyster because it's been in the oyster juice? No, it's actually called an oyster leaf. It tastes remarkably like oysters. That tastes so much like oysters! Yeah! Obviously the oyster shell vodka. There's actually as well verjus in there as well, which is essentially grape juice, but it's from green grapes, so unripened grapes. So it adds the sort of bitterness to it, the, the sourness. Sugar syrup mixed with jalapeno brine, which we have surplus as well, just sort of rounds it all off. The jalapeno brine just adds a tiny little bit of heat, but also a little bit more saltiness as well and some sweetness, and then the martini as well, dry martinis. It's quite, I mean, it's a relatively simple recipe, but you've got in there, you've got salty, sweet, bit of, bit of savouriness, you've got, it's sort of like everything one. I don't think you can call it relatively simple after you've cooked oyster shells <laughs> into vodka. And <laughs> I think it's genius that essentially you're taking leftover products from the restaurant, doing some clever stuff with them and charging a premium for it. And I love the fact that storytelling becomes the whole menu. And that's yeah. what makes, I think what you guys do at Fallow, so forward thinking. Never have I had a shot before and the aftertaste be a bit fishy. <laughs> and I'm enjoying it. You know what I mean? Keep them coming, Evers. Ready for another? Yes. If you're enjoying this, there are some small things you can do that make a big difference to us. Like the video. Subscribe if you aren't. Click the notification bell and select all. Thanks. This does make you wonder, what's the point going to a restaurant when a restaurant can come to you? It's so <laughs> nice, isn't it? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was expecting that to be a tail. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cod's cheek and more. <laughs> How do you know that? Because it's a big <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mate. So we have had this on the pass on table and as optional ingredients a couple of times in the studio and it's always been avoided. So this time we've got the guys in to cook it properly. Do you want to see that done? Yes. Please. Oh, are we? Right. Switchy room. Oh, okay, right, yeah, fair. Okay, guys, back in your comfort zone. Where do you get your cod's head from? Because it's a good point. Like, you're not going to pick up one of these at the supermarket, are you? Obviously, due to the size of our restaurant, it's pretty big. So. Um, we have a bit more buying power, but we buy a lot of ours from Billingsgate Market. One of our suppliers is obviously quite a big, big fish supplier, so any cod that he sells, he now cuts off the heads for us. And we've got to the point now where it's so popular that we now end up having to um, branch out to other suppliers, but loads of different heads work as well. We've done turbot, brill, beautiful. Uh, the cod is really, from our experience, is the nicest one. Because the meat that comes off it is genuinely, I believe, or we believe, better than the fillet. It's the same meat, but you have more connective tissue sort of binding it together. And the bones are obviously all very soft. It's not like it has a skull. So the bones just slide out as you're eating it. And then as they slide out, little nuggets of meat sort of appear. It's a bit like having a roast chicken carcass on a Sunday. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you dive into it mm. and then it's just like beautiful bits of meat. And it's like some bits are crispy, some bits are soft loads of bits of fat. And it's incredibly immersive at the table because you're literally picking around a head. I think that's part of the experience. So you've got this throat here, which is actually my favourite bit. That's like a delicacy in Northern Spain. And then 
Yeah, and we've got this beautiful collar as well. This is where you just have to trust the chef because it's not calling me at the moment. So now, obviously, with the nature of the head, it's quite difficult. You can't because it's round and bubbly. You can't quite steer it. So we use this lovely, fashionable uh, plumbing tool. <laughs> um, so just to get into all those nooks and crannies and really just add a bit more char. So that, that's just going to go in the oven and then we're just going to bring it up. Um, you do need to cook the two elements slightly separately, so we'll just take out the collar. The collar is almost pure meat, um, which is this bit off on the side. That you want to just take, cook it like a fillet. The head, due to the, it's got all the bones and stuff in there and the, and the cartilage, you need to take it a bit higher, a bit more like 56 degrees, and then let it rest. And all the juices will come out of it, and then we'll, use, we'll add that into the sauce as well. So we're going to bring you the cod's no. head back cooked, but with it, you're serving what? So these are just uh, beautiful, um, like, deep sea mussels. Another incredibly sustainable ingredient, just to help clean the sea. Yeah, we're just going to flame these um, in a super hot pan. Hopefully it's hot enough, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll send the guys downstairs to TV. Whoa, whoa, whoa! So this isn't flambe like alcohol, this is literally flaming oil. That's a, that's a hazard! It's not actually for show, it's actually for flavour purposes. So the, the oil went in first and then the, um, the oil actually coats the mussels and then the flames add that lick of smoke around the mussel. So the burning flames, as you can imagine, is smoking the mussels while they're cooking. Wow! Most of that is now steam as you add in the wine. See Off you go, mate. Jay. <laughs> <laughs> we knew it was going to happen. We knew it was going to happen. Definitely don't try this at home over your extraction if your extraction hasn't been cleaned for a while because the whole thing will go up. And the ambrosia custard? And not custard, we've got a, but a garlic butter emulsion. We've got the reduced white wine that we've reduced really, really hard. It basically, the quicker you cook them, the, the fresher and more juicy they're going to be. You need that intense heat because you want to reduce the sauce super, super quickly. When the mussels hit the pan and they just start to open, all that happens is those juices that initially come out of the mussels just start to caramelise around the mussels. <laughs> Uh, this is our homemade chilli sauce. Just a little bit. I, I, I was expecting like a dab, not a bottle. <laughs> in the same pan that we'll just cook the uh, cod's head in, we've just got a lovely bit of toast, oh. which we've just uh, cooked in the oil that was left over from the cod's head. We call this a moist maker. Um, and we're just going to use this and the, put it in the base of the dish. Um, and the cod's head and the mussels is going to sit on top of it. And then it, when you finish the meat, you can just get this beautiful bit of bread that soaks up all those beautiful juices. Really important, key step. More fire. <laughs> We've got a little, little bit of lemon juice, salt and pepper. You know that pepper mill costs 200 pounds. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Their toast doesn't quite fit the fish, does it? No, I don't know. How would you, if you had to, summarise the food at the restaurant? Chef led, but like, you know, it's. We it's, started off just making just food that we wanted to, right? to eat. Yeah, yeah. it's food that we'd want to go out and eat. So, to totally self centered. Sriracha wasn't, it was a thing of, you know, we like eating sriracha, we love it, most chefs do. We make the sriracha in the restaurant using its British ingredients. Once we make the sauce, we take the pulp that's left, that goes into loads of different recipes. We put the pulp into the flatbreads we make in the restaurant, so fermented chili flatbread. We use the sauce instead of, um, you know, buying in cayenne pepper and stuff like that. Um, so it's like using that as a base to then make loads of other things. Use, we use the sriracha brine to brine some meats and then it has like, adds a little chilli flavour into it. I'd say from, from a normal perspective, it's the food you didn't know you wanted to eat. Yeah, the food that sounded like it was going to be too chefy and too, I'm not sure, and then turns out as... Get it in horror. my face. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to get into that cod's face? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In the restaurant, we'll normally explain it to the, to the guests that the nape of the neck, the throat, cheek, which is this beautiful puck of, puck of meat here, the collar, where most of the like, hard-working meat is, but really flaky, beautiful white fish. And if you get, dig into the collar over there, if you flip the plate round, that there is just pure meat. It's almost like your darker meat. And to think that all of that would typically go to waste. Well, that's what they call the cod lug. And on so the ships, they used to hang up the cod like back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, from, the, from the lugs, so they were always really damaged. There's so much so flavour in there. And the sauce is incredible. The mussels are My, chunky beasts. Mighty meaty. Who's going to crack into the old uh, moisty? Oh, oh my god! Wobble, wobble camp. Oh, that is... Filled. It's impossible to eat daintily. You just have to get involved and then, then got, you get the real pleasure. Just got to embrace it. Like, have a good swig of drink before, get hands in and then just go to the toilet and we'll have a wash down after. <laughs> <laughs> have, have a cold shower after. Yeah. <laughs> that toast is phenomenal. The char on it as well yeah. just adds that extra layer of... Oh. Boys, you got room for fourth. Keep them coming. 
been sat here, eyes closed, holding hands for quite a while now. <laughs> Last, but definitely not least, lift the cloche. Fuck! There's a lot of meat. It's been dry aged. It looks like nothing I've ever seen in a shop. <laughs> what have we got? Jamie's having a moment. <laughs> so far they've said beef, which yeah. is correct, but there's a bit more to it than that, isn't it? Exactly, this is a dairy cow. It's slightly different to your standard beef steak, but this is a whole rib, typically 12 to 13 years old. So much, much older than beef cattle would be. And you can see it's been dry aged, but just probably a little bit more than you would uh, your standard 28 days, just because it is slightly older, so it needs slightly longer to en enhance the tenderness. So an animal that's already worked its entire life, giving us milk, and then finding a really excellent use for it at the end of that. I'm not, I'm not sure what to expect from this type of meat. The characteristics are the same. I mean, most cattle is usually under 30 months. So they, ca they class it as UTM and OTM, under 30 months and over 30 months. So this is obviously quite considerably more than the 30 month. So typically I think the, the real thing to pick out from a flavour point of view is, is grass. It's, it's got this herbal grassiness because it spent so long in the field, uh, so long on pasture. It just has this different note to it. Beefiness, it's got all of, the, all of that quality but then it's got this also this sort of cowy sort of mature herbal characteristic. It's just, I think, once you've eaten it as much as me, I think it's just absolutely delicious. Is this type of meat Cheaper because it's not used as often, or more expensive because it's not used as often. I think the, th <laughs> the thing is with dairy cow, it, it's misleading to say that this is a waste product. But like 75% of the meat that we eat in the UK is is from dairy cow, we just don't know it. The problem is there's no scale. If you have a beautiful Jersey cow that's out pasture all of its life uh, for 12 years, it's absolutely stunning. And then, you know, you've got some places in Spain and Italy where this is this is the absolute creme de la creme. And 13 year cow, absolutely, uh, absolutely huge, is the best meat you can get. In the UK, we don't have that we don't have that tradition. So we, we produce a lot of dairy in the UK and in Ireland and in Scotland. People don't really know how good dairy cow can be um, when it's treated the right way and when it's cooked a little bit differently. So you can obviously see it and smell it. And even in that state, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty beefy in its, in its smell and aroma. But would you like to try some? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Oh. <laughs> we'll get Jamie a cold shower later. Oh, that is oh spectacular. My goodness. Oh, that bad boy. Oh, we've been double teamed. Oh, excellent. Double team. Look at me now. So, well, this is a salt, <laughs> salt bay moment, isn't it? This is the rump, the rump cap, all the fat, the tallow from the top. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we just like, this is how we finish all of our meat in the restaurant. So with loads of fresh herbs. You're rump baying. Oh, look at that, look at that. <laughs> Absolutely is that, is that filth. A, is that a bouquet garni you're using? <laughs> yeah. Careful. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> too far. There we go. Who's going for that? This is not. <laughs> it's dripping on his face. <laughs> <laughs> so excellent. Stupid. Don't think I'm waiting for that, do you? Yeah, same, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> We're being polite. The texture mm. is so different to a normal steak. It's mm. more down like a roast beef joint yeah. kind of texture. Yeah. yeah. It's got more of a chew to it, but it's not chewy. It's not tough, it's incredibly tender. Thanks, it's man. a real mixture. And in terms of the beef fat, the sort of the tallow that you've rendered down, where else does that go or is that just over the steaks? Um, we, we, we use that in a fat wash cocktail as well. We make a, a cow fat, aged cow fat, old fashioned. You know, we're actually working on candles at the moment for the restaurant. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> With the tallow, so like aged cow fat is actually something that we actually struggle to get rid of because we, we produce so much, so much of it. That fat, parts of it melt in your mouth. Other bits are a little bit tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't mind chewing on it, like because every time you bite, you're releasing more and more outrageous flavour. That flavour that is locked in there is unreal. So, boys, four brand new ideas around sustainable British produce. Comment down below which one was your favourite, and make sure you go and check out a fellow restaurant. But if you can't get there, your YouTube channel is awesome. You've got so much fun stuff, including POV Chef. You have to go check that out. Thank you Thanks. so Thank much. You. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Phenomenal. This is incredible.